33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show. You are tuned into. We are here live Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific time, which is the time zone we're going to right now. Uh, the podcast available at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific time uh, as well. Check us out, folks. If you can't live, then check us out on the podcast. As I watch in uh, Studio A here, the uh, monitor with um, uh, Stacey Abrams, uh, talking about her run for governor and so forth and the voter suppression going on. Again, folks, this is something that the Democratic Party has to uh, be able uh, to uh, talk about and and run on. And that's another reason why we need Nina Turner to be the next congresswoman from the great city of Cleveland. And I know that our good friend MTC would agree with me. He's uh, seen Nina Turner live there in uh, the 206, opening him up. Opening up for Bernie Sanders, and uh, let's bring in our good friend. He is uh, the executive director of Democracy Watch News. He's also a great uh, reporter for them. And, of course, you can catch him here every Friday at 5.30 Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific. He is also a fantastic musician. That's why we call him the Renaissance Man of the Jeff Santos Show. Mark Taylor Canfield, we say Hello. <laughs> So I don't have my electric guitar ready for you today. So I thought I would do the next best thing, which is next to a piccolo, a harmonica is one of the best instruments because you can just there put you it go. in your pocket. But it's been a crazy week. You know, I was covering Joe Biden's visit here, and we can talk about that. That's sometime. right. We've got we really to talk about that. I forgot all about it. It's been so many so many days since that happened yeah. and everything and chaos going on. Yeah, we got to get your thoughts on that. But before we, we get into uh, the environmental piece and Joe Biden not really doing much on uh, on the issue of student loans, though I guess there's some report that he may do a little bit. You know, it's so uh, f- unfortunate that he's unwilling to go big and bold. But anyways, um, talk to me about, because I know you have seen Bernie Sanders there many times. You talk about you know your uh, scenario where uh, you know you've been there on the on the first row uh, next to Miss Jayapal and so forth. Uh, you know Nina Turner must turn on the two hundred six like few others. You know, with the exception of Bernie. Uh, talk to me about that because you know this is the crowd that Nina. Um, you know, has electrified. And and again, you know, we just need more people, I think, across the country to see her and uh, and to observe what you and I have seen firsthand. I've seen her many times uh, open up for Bernie from Boston to Ohio to uh, Chicago. Uh, Your thoughts, my friend? Well, if Nina wants to move to Washington State and run for Senate here, I'm totally going to back her. I know she's got another race right now she's working on in Ohio, but just just a shout-out there. And also, yeah, Bernie and Pramila and I uh, ended up on MSNBC because of uh, his rock star rally uh, here at the Tacoma Dome, actually, just south of Seattle, and it was like a rock star rally. And Nina Turner is probably like, I can't think of another candidate that comes close to getting the kind of reaction that Bernie does from the folks in Seattle because we all know that she's a true blue progressive, that she's going to fight for the working people and the poor in this country, that she's not beholden to the corporate money. So that's what we like to hear. I mean, sometimes we're a little bit disappointed by our progressive representatives here, our governor and our, our congresswoman from Nero Jayapal, but in, all, in general, they do a great job. But Nina stands above the crowd in so many ways. She's just such a fighter. She's just so honest and from the heart. And I remember uh, listening to her on your show when she was a surrogate for Bernie Sanders when he was running for president, and she was just amazing. I just loved hearing her. Every time I get a chance to hear her, when she was on uh, the conference call with the Progressive Democrats of America, that was great. She's so honest. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, it's so hard to find that in politics. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would say these days, but whenever, it's always been that way. But she speaks from the heart. I'm really disappointed that the Progressive uh, Caucus of the U.S. Congress supported her opponent, um, Brown, in that race. So, uh, Nina is not going to go away no matter what happens. She is going to be out in front on these progressive issues as long as she's out there in the public eye. 
And yeah, she comes to Seattle. Wherever she's at, it's going to sell out. It will be standing room only, and people will be there to cheer her on. So, like I said, you know, she kind of fits with the Seattle ethic here. I think she would be a great person to move to our city. So anytime, you know, <laughs> but hopefully she'll win in Ohio, and then, you know, she'll be rocking the house in Cleveland. That would be great. Yeah, hey, she could be on a, on a ticket very soon uh, on a national level, you know, campaigning there in the 206. Um, so, you know, you, you did have, um, uh, and, I, and I agree with you 100% exactly, uh, she is unique, special. Uh, this is a woman who, of course, came from a, a very tough upbringing in the inner city of Cleveland, lost her mom at a very young age. She had to bring up her two sisters. Uh, she is also, of course, um, you know, just a spectacular speaker, somebody who understands how to motivate people and in motivation and particularly right now when we we don't get much from washington we don't get much uh from you know politicians regardless of whether they're in washington or in oklahoma city or or los angeles or wherever um and it is it is vitally important to have somebody who can inspire and that she does just that Joe Biden, not so inspiring the other day when he came uh, to your great city of Seattle. Um, it's concerned that, you know, it's a lot of a lot of yes, we can do this when it comes to the environment. Of course, in the Evergreen State, with probably the most uh, environmentally friendly governor in Jay Inslee. And he talks about uh, the student loans. He doesn't want to go to the 50K level, but maybe something less. It just is sort of, you know, it's not the worst but it's far, far from where we can go. Is that what sort of was your coming away from the the event with Mr. Biden? Again, better than what we have had, better than Obama, better than Clinton, obviously much better than the the uh, previous two Bushes and Trump. I mean, that's enough to give you a uh, you know an Alka Seltzer moment. Um, but um, we need more, and we need we need to have better, and that's why you know Nina Turner is. Uh, a huge, huge uh, a win for progressives if we can make that happen on Tuesday. You know, she's also been very supportive of the Amazon workers and the Starbucks workers yes. that are fighting to unionize, and that's a big issue here. Our city council member, Shama Salant, helped uh, host a big rally over the weekend, the same time that uh, Joe Biden was here. And yeah, you know, I, I covered him as a reporter. It was a little bit frustrating because they didn't um, give his give us any idea about his itinerary until 12 hours before he showed up so that makes it a little difficult that's why it's hard to have a family when you're a journalist because you don't know what your schedule is going to be like or what you're going to be doing uh, you have to jump at the last minute uh he also held mostly in fact all quote private events uh, while he was there even though he spoke to some of the students at green river college um his event down at seward park where he did sign an executive order uh, protecting some old growth trees, not like uh, Clinton was able to do. And I, and I talked to Clinton when he came to Seattle and told him if he wanted to win votes here, he needed to, to save the old growth forest and close all the federal logging roads, which he ended up doing. Biden is not necessarily going in that direction. There's still a lot of clear cutting. If you look at Google Maps um, in Oregon and Washington, the logging industry has not gone away. Most of the old growth is protected, but not all of it. Uh, there are some old growth trees, actually, and bald eagles, believe it or not, at Seward Park in the city of Seattle where Joe Biden signed that executive order. And so that's cool to live in a city where, you know, you can go to a local park and see that. But he needs to do more. He needs to meet with young voters. Um, if he's going to reach out to the, the people who follow Greta Thunberg, then he's really got to do a better job. He's got to um, speak to the electorate and not just to the political big wigs like Mayor Bruce Harrell and, you know, Governor Jay Inslee when he was here and our two senators, Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell, he really needs to get down on the grassroots level with folks and convince them that the Democrats are the ticket they need to support. Uh, he is, you know, in general, a more pleasant person by far than Trump ever was um, and, and a lot less, less divisive. But he also kind of lacks uh, some of the, the, the spine that we would like to see him. You know, I, I have a friend who's with the, the backbone campaign, and I'm sure they would say the same thing as that. He needs to grow his spine. He needs to cancel all the student debt. That's been a big issue. Um, my congressperson, Pramila Jayapal, has been all over that. And a lot of the progressive members of Congress have been trying to pressure Biden to just cancel all student debt right now. And uh, he's, 
you know, he's, he's not moving on some of these progressive issues that we would like him to see. And he really needs to, like I said, just reach out to the grassroots, reach out to the voters, and stop holding these private events where only reporters and political bigwigs can get anywhere near him because he needs to in, enlarge the franchise, not make it some kind of an elitist, you know, new exactly. rule. You're spot on, my friend. Look, I mean, you know, if you want to win, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to basically, uh, you know, encourage and allow in those progressives, those people who really care about politics, the Nina Turner devotees, the people who listen to this show, people who read your stuff, the people who are involved in, in activist politics, progressives in general, progressive populist, uh, you know, that are important. Those, labor fights i mean i've been saying this to to uh to, to folks and yesterday we had it confirmed that uh, uh savante myrick the former mayor of ithaca who really wants pol- real police reform not uh defund the police nonsense uh that you know a lot of people like to trash democrats on and he was saying because he took he took my word about having the Staten Island workers and the Starbucks workers, um, you know, particularly Kristen Small's African American success story and, and how he put together a group of people after he was fired by Amazon, along with a lot of Latina and Latino teammates. Bring them to the White House. Celebrate them. You know, make it clear this is the next generation that we should have unions in every household. That's what we need, and apparently somebody in the White House took Mr. Myrick's uh, uh, ideas, People for the American Way's executive director, after we gave it to him. So what we say here is actually making it to the White House. So here you go. Maybe we can just pressure these guys to, to you know to wake up and smell some good Seattle coffee and uh, not Starbucks. Although getting better, if you keep getting more unions uh, workers there, I'll be promoting Starbucks. I'm all for that. Um, you know, the coffee is not the best for my purposes, but that's okay. Um, so there you go, Mr. MTC. Yeah, you know, I. by the way, I just saw a great film called Glory with Matthew... Roderick and um, Morgan Freeman and Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah, it's the old Africa. movie. Right, right, right. The, the 54th Regiment from Massachusetts, which stormed Fort Edwards and at Charleston, and unfortunately half of them were killed that day, but that was the original Black Lives Matter movement, right? And sure. And it needs to carry that forth today, and it needs to be carried forth with the Starbucks and the Amazon employees, too. And one of my suggestions is that they should join together, because I think the clout of all of these workers together, um, you know, maybe some boycotts or some picket lines might really help. I think Schultz, you know, Howard Schultz and some of the Starbucks uh, management and executives are finally starting to smell the roses or smell the coffee. They're finally starting to wake up and realize that they got to get behind this effort and stop blocking it because the National Labor Relations Board and so many other people are out there. Bernie Sanders is out there saying very directly that uh, Amazon and Starbucks have been accused of illegal um, union-busting practices. So, you know, they need to, to get with the times. This idea that you can keep people at minimum wage and low benefits so they can't even afford to live in the city where they work is just over. we got to move beyond that. The homelessness, the poverty that's been created because of these low-wage jobs. I know Joseph Sandberg is out there every day trying to get people to raise the minimum wage. We have to hit it every day. We can't back down. And, uh, you know, just like the Tom Petty song that, you know. That's right. Eddie, Eddie Vedder covers. Do. Won't back down. <laughs> you can't back down. Yeah, you can't do it. And Joe Biden's got to wake up and smell the, the coffee, too. If the Democrats want to win an election, man, they got to start really reaching out to the working class. It's time, it's way past they time. Really they really do. They need to get down to 30 in the trenches. Long overdue. It. Exactly, you know, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, look, it's it's a far drop from that great Seattle Space Needle, uh, and that's where the Democrats uh, have. And there's a long way uh, from where they need to be, uh, you know, from uh, from the top of the tippy tip of the uh, uh, fantastic Space Needle, where I had a chance to uh, to have some dinner some 30 years ago, uh, to the bottom, and uh, so we got a long way to go I'm on the Democratic at it right Party. Now. I'm looking at it right now out of my window. And also, a couple quick things. Uh, the, the Seahawks just picked up a really great uh, offensive tackle from Mississippi State to protect our un- whoever our quarterback is going to be now. That <laughs> yeah. Russell Wilson is be yes. But we got a great draft pick. And also, it looks like maybe Colin Kaepernick might actually get a chance to play in the NFL. Oh my Wouldn't God. that be the great? NFL, and and I'm hoping Pete Carroll... I'm hoping that Pete Carroll, the progressive uh, uh, head coach of Seattle, would be the one to do it. 
you know, well deserved. That would be great. Long Former overdue. Former rivals, of course. San Francisco yes. and Seattle have a severe rivalry going, but you know, when it comes to things like Black Lives Matter movement, the the Seahawks were one of the first teams out there in front to, to kneel to take a knee for that, and that was never an issue with the players or Coach Carroll ever. Um, they totally supported that move. So yeah, I mean, I have so much. Uh, love in my heart for Kaepernick for standing up the way he did. And if that guy came to Seattle, I'm sure he would be welcomed with open arms. And we would forget all of those games <laughs> where Russell Wilson and Kaepernick were going at each other. And I even wrote about him in my, my song, Legion of Boom, about, you know, they tried to make Colin Kaepernick cry because the Seahawks are so good with the Legion of, of Boom. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that anymore. I think he really needs the support of the league. And by the way, I think I mentioned this before. Seattle actually has a pro rugby team called the Sea Wolves, and we also have three, count them, three pro ultimate frisbee <laughs> teams. Yes, the, yes, you are you are a frisbee fanatic, uh, an FF, I guess you could say, and um, don't say that too many times though, uh, fast. Yes. Uh, and and um, I'm I'm going to uh, hopefully one of these days get out to Seattle and we'll play uh, on the shores of the Puget Sound. Uh, that would be uh, a fun time. I want to go up to Minneapolis here because the cities are uh, are very similar in their politics and uh, very similar, except a little colder in Minneapolis. Uh, John, you are uh, next with uh, MTC. <laughs> Have a comment or question for our good friend, the 206? Yeah, uh, even though I'm not part of the demographic, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are related in these two cities, and I'm not making this up, who, oh, yeah, I have a cousin in in uh, Tacoma. I have, you know, relatives in, in Seattle or somewhere in Washington because this was once considered the gateway to the Northwest even though we're thousands of miles away. But I I wanted to say, you know, you can't, like Nina Turner uh, at Bernie, you can't fake genuineness, but we've got to work with what we work with. And I know it's come up before on your show. Uh, Is there a change at the NLRB with the policies that uh, they're going to be more aggressive in, uh, you know, monitoring uh, these uh, union actions and I also wanted to say just one more thing, and I'll shut up. That uh, Wobbly is there's a uh, there, there's a, a documentary on the Wobblies, www, which was a a, a, a a international union that was very popular and was targeted by the FBI or what was before the FBI for uh, you know basically attacks and and they uh, basically destroyed it after World War One. So anyway, there you go. That's all I have to say. Hey, uh, no, thank you, John. Uh, and one thing we did talk to Larry Cohen about this last couple of weeks, and he's mentioned that yeah. the NLRB has got some great, great people. Of course, Larry's the former head of the CWA and is still very strong with his union buddies yeah. there and across the country. And so I think right. that there is a better position. I guess well, that's why a lot of our contributors are in D.C. believe that Biden has appointed yep. some good people, particularly uh, yeah. from our friends yeah. in the Economic Policy Institute. It's just that there are so right. many people who are ensconced in government, in in the Congress, that are the corporate Democrats, and you have to fight them exactly. every minute yeah. by minute, yeah. and that's the, uh, that's the yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, and Mark, you have anything to say to John before he runs? I have cousins in Minneapolis. That's not a <laughs> I should get a t-shirt. I need two t-shirts. One that says I have cousins in Minneapolis, and one that says I went to Boston and got caught or something. No, I know. I need one that says stupid American tourists with a bullseye for when I travel Europe. But, yeah, the, the <laughs> Minneapolis is kind of like a sister city, even though you have your own sister really city there with St. Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's cool. Yeah. It's, and, you know, Joe Biden yeah. is always, I remember listening to him when he was running for president multiple times in the past when he talked a lot about labor. And so I don't know who it was. I think it was a progressive member of Congress the other day, basically just called him out on Twitter and said, okay, Joe, let's let's prove your credentials here. Are you pro labor labor or not are you talking about the starbucks employees are you talking about the amazon employees are you giving them uh, yeah let's do the pro act too the backing backing because it's time it's way past time for him to do that he's supposed to be a labor guy so what's the deal <laughs> what's yeah. the deal we, joe exactly we need more of it so joe which is wherever you go joe dimaggio uh john thank you for the call have a great weekend my friend yeah. um 
Mark, uh, just a couple of minutes left here. Um, and what, before we get to the Seattle Mariners and uh, their great start uh, to the MLB season, I, I want to ask you a, a little bit about this Initiative 135 uh, that's going on in um, in Washington State. Give us a little background on that before we have some baseball talk to end the uh, segment. So social housing is the issue, and it's co-sponsored by my friend, who I who I wrote a song using his lyrics. His name is Frank Chop. He's been, he was actually the majority leader in the in the House for a while. He is on our state legislature from my district, the 43rd, and he said that it looks like the initiative process is going to work, at least in terms of getting it on the ballot, that they're, they're going to get the, the signatures they need. And what Initiative 135 calls for is publicly owned land, because one of the issues we have when it comes to housing people is one, you have zoning issues where a lot of wealthy folks and a lot of them, you know, let's face it, are a lot of neoliberal white folks who have money keep blocking efforts to build affordable housing in their neighborhoods. And they're really afraid of their, you know, real estate prices going down, et cetera. So if we have publicly owned land that's in perpetua, uh, owned by the public, then no corporation, no um, major real estate developer can come in and double people's rents, which is part of what's happening. I mean, her, okay, a, a friend of mine got their rent doubled, and another friend said that she's a public school teacher and she just paid off her student debts and she's 60 years old. So that should tell you something. But I 135 is a way of providing affordable housing for people that's publicly owned so nobody can mess with it. And once it's... Um, grandfathered in and we get this publicly owned land then then people who live there are guaranteed for the rest of their life uh, reasonable rent and that's what we need in seattle with the skyrocket that's a great idea look we've been the housing issue is so, so critical to the nation. You know, I mean, in, in places like Seattle, San Francisco, New York, L.A., uh, Boston, uh, you know, Washington, D.C., you know, it's these big cities, people can't, they have to move away. So, you know, anybody who's who's 25 or 35 and wants to settle down in the metropolitan area, good luck, you know, trying to find a house under half a million dollars a year. And, you know, and, and the average person, the average American make 35 k a year. <laughs> yeah, try buying a house on that, even if it's 60 67 k which is about what it is for household incomes today in America, because women make less than men. So, you know, that that's that's the insanity of it all. It's just pathetic. Um, you know, Mark, we're, we're this... Couple- a we're creating a permanent uh, underclass. economic underclass. Yep. And we also have economic refugee camps. They're called houseless encampments. And our mayor, Harold, has been trying to... have been raiding them using the police and city workers uh, since he took uh, office... And, you know, it's another way of trying to, to sweep everything under the rug and hide the problem. But the truth is, is that people can't afford the. Well, let's quote the guy from New York, right? The rents are too damn high. The rent is too Way damn too high. high. Exactly. No doubt. Hey, your Mariners are off to a great start, my friend. Um, that's great. And I love uh, you got Ty France and, uh, uh, you know, of course, you got Hanniger still there. You got a great. And I think people are coming out to the ballpark, too, right? Yes, they are. Uh, I was able to, uh, I was invited to a game. Um, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> they lost. But, that's right. Uh, that's right. That's all right. Game, but they picked won. the wrong they day, that's all. Houston the night before. Yeah. But you know what? Um, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm about right. I, I'm thinking that any moment now I'm going to hear a Rod Serling introducing this segment about the Mariners because of, for so long now they've been a losing team, even though they're partly owned by Nintendo, which has plenty of money. But as I've complained about before, all of our Hall of Fame players get traded off to New York, <laughs> all the way down to Tino Martinez, you know. No, but, no, uh, don't even go there. Like, don't forget, they are the evil yeah, empire. But, so, But they're doing better. They're, they're looking good. They're actually, uh, the predictions sound good. Uh, I'm amazed. My mind is kind of blown, but it's about time. I mean, the Mariners have been kind of the also ran. Well, it's, it's for uh, unfortunately too long. You, you're the, they're on the longest uh, uh, dra- um, drought of uh, a playoff team in all four major sports. So, 2001, well, the last time you won. So, uh, I don't want to bring that up, but it's it's the reality. But you can you're going to do it this year. I'm going to say Seattle's in the playoffs. That's what's going to happen. Wow! I love there you go. That. That's all crazy. right, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, enjoy your weekend. I know you're already starting it out there. Go Mariners. Win, win, win. Thanks, hey, Mark, have yourself have a, great a great weekend. weekend. You yeah, too. Go to YouTube and check out my videos and Democracy Watch News. We'll see you later. Thanks. All the best, man. I want to thank Ron Kreider for producing this broadcast. Uh, thank you all 
for uh, contributing to the show, the great callers, the great listeners, suggestions, and emails, and texts, and so on and so forth. Keep on fighting, folks, peacefully until Monday. When more about Nina Turner on the Jeff Santos Show. Have yourself a great weekend. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now is my time to say I gotta go.